Maailma kylässä radio. Pysy kuulolla. Assisting almost 100 million people in around 83 countries each year. The World Food Program is the leading humanitarian organization saving lives, delivering food assistance in emergencies and working with communities to improve nutrition. Two-thirds of the work done by World Food Program is in conflict-affected countries where people are three times more likely to be undernourished than those living in countries without conflict. In emergencies, World Food Program is often first on the scene, providing food assistance to victims of war, civil conflict, earthquakes, hurricanes, crop failures and other natural disasters. At the moment, we are facing a global emergency. The coronavirus pandemic is disrupting the world as we knew it, with a heavy toll on human lives and economic activities. Its rapid global spread is threatening to affect millions of people already made vulnerable by food insecurity, malnutrition and the effects of other disasters. How is this all affecting the work done by food, World Food Programme? I have here with me the director, for the World Food Program Nordic office, Anne Paulsen. Hello, and nice to meet you. Hello, Anna, very nice to meet you. And also welcome to the World Village Radio. Thank um, you so much. How would you and describe this COVID-19 pandemic in your point of view or the World Food Program's point of view? Thank you. If I may, may let me just say that uh, I'm so sorry I cannot be in Helsinki this year as I've been in previous years for the World Village Festival, but I'm really happy for being provided this opportunity to talk still about uh, the challenges that the World Food Programme is facing in the face of a COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So uh, what we see now in the World Food Programme is a health crisis that has turned into a humanitarian crisis. The impact uh, this health crisis, the COVID-19 crisis, has had on some of the world's most vulnerable people are immense. Uh, we are facing um, a disaster, a crisis um, not seen since Second World War. And um, we are extremely worried for those people who are most vulnerable, who live in very fragile countries, that... Um, this health pandemic might push millions of people onto the brink of starvation because of the health pandemic. How has World Food Pro- Program been adapting to the quickly changing landscape of restrictions and other regulations? Are normal operations possible at this moment? <laughs> the, the, it, it's a very challenging uh, situation for the World Food Program and for other organizations, humanitarian organizations working in the response. We're seeing country after country where uh, borders are being closed, where um, sup- where transport routes are being uh, are being closed off or sealed off. Whole societies are on lockdown, and of course, this has a huge impact on our ability to 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 work and to serve the people who need our assistance having said that from the very onset of this crisis the world food program has been doing everything it could and colleagues have been working 24/7 to um, to prepare for the impact of this crisis on in the countries where we work as world food program meaning we have uh, we have procured we have prepositioned food Uh, stocks in in strategic um, areas uh, in fragile countries and societies. We have uh, prepositioned stocks that can cover at least three months of uh, of the most sort of urgent needs among the populations that we serve. So we have done what we could in order to mitigate the consequences of this disruption that we see everywhere in the in the global supply chain. What are the food security implications of, of this pandemic in, in like concrete examples? If, if I may just say that already um, we were facing global food crises even before COVID-19, uh, even before we ever heard about such a thing as a coronavirus. 
um, in 2019, um, there were 135 million acutely hungry people in the world, according to the latest report on uh, global food crises. So the highest number in four years. Um, this due to uh, a number of factors, climate change, conflict, and, and economic collapse around the world. So we were already seeing a very sort of difficult and, and dire situation for, for, for millions of people across the world. Um, with uh, the COVID-19 crisis, the pandemic, um, we fear uh, that another 130 million people will be pushed into the brink of starvation. So there were in 2019, 135 million people who were at the brink of starvation. We fear in WFP and our estimate shows that another 130 million can be pushed uh, over that brink, uh, meaning that more than a quarter billion people will be in a position where they are depending on food assistance for survival. So the the prospects or the the, the uh, what we see right now is extremely alarming. We are very very worried um, for for the lives and the health of millions of people. Uh, they were already vulnerable. COVID nineteen has made them even more so. Which countries would you say are mostly at at risk at the moment? There's a number of countries at risk, uh, a number of fragile and, and, and food insecure countries. Um, there are countries where um, you have landlocked countries such as, uh, such as Zimbabwe that depends on import, food importations or countries that are depending on, on exports such as oil. Uh, then you have countries uh, where you have a uh, where you have, I, you have a combination of other factors such as climate change, uh, conflict. These are countries like uh, South Sudan, for instance, um, in the Sahel, where you see conflict compounded by 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 conflict uh, by by climate change, and now COVID nineteen plus economic collapse. So there's a number of countries that I would say are really uh, fragile in, 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 in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. But if you look at countries that are already food insecure and that are at risk, you would also look at countries like Afghanistan, Venezuela, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti, to mention some of them. And as you said before, the situation was already bad before COVID-19. And um, I think it was the number or something, something like the quarter of a billion people suffering acute hunger by the end of this year, according to the latest figures from, from World Food Program. Um, and Paulse, what would you say, what kind of action needs to be taken right now? What we're uh, in World Food Program really uh, focusing all our efforts on uh, right now is raising uh, and securing the funds that we need to feed uh, the 100 million people that we feed uh, every single day throughout a year. That is the, the core of our business. And we are, of course, worried that, that uh, funding might, um, might not reach us to the same level as it's on before, because a lot of our traditional donor governments, they are struggling themselves with the consequences of COVID-19. We are advocating really, really strongly. We are sounding the alarm on behalf of the people we assist, those who depend on our assistance for, for survival. Um, we're sounding the alarm to raise the funds needed to cover uh, those needs for the 100, 100 million people. But there might also be an additional uh, number of people who are becoming food insecure and who are, becoming, who are being pushed to the to the uh, edge of starvation because of the COVID-19. So we are really uh, doing what we can to sound the alarm. We are calling upon our uh, government partners. Um, let me, in this connection, if I may mention um, uh, Finland as one of our really strong partners. Finland provides, um, a, a, they're an important strategic partner. There's in, an important uh, donor to the World Food Program. They provide the lion's share of their funding as flexible funding, meaning that we had funds already from the beginning of the year that was not earmarked, uh, meaning that we could kickstart operations, we could start sort of 
changing our ways of working so that we could ensure that we could reach society's impact by COP19. So we do have strong support from, from Finland and, and other countries, but we are sounding the alarm. Um, what we're also doing is we are calling upon governments across the world to keep supply chain open, to keep borders open, to keep transport routes open so that we can ensure that food and other essential supplies reach those people who need it the most. As World Food Program, we are the logistical uh, muscle of the entire humanitarian community. We are mandated to ensure logistics, whether for WHO and essential protection gear or medical staff on behalf of UNICEF, whether it's uh, educational uh, material or any other um, equipment that they need to get. We, we are the ones that secure this, uh, this um, supply of essential equipment and personnel. So we are depending on not just for the food assistance that we provide as World Food Program, but also on behalf of the entire uh, international humanitarian community that, that we can continue to have supplies uh, reaching those who need it. Uh, Anne Paulsen, you are the director for the World Food Programme Nordic office and you are working in Copenhagen at the moment. Uh, it seems like you have a million projects on your table at the moment. What's the next thing that you will grasp and, and start to work with? I, I, I'm, I'm really sorry to say that I think that COVID-19 uh pandemic will be part of our everyday for a long time to come i don't see um i don't see the sort of the sky clearing for in 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 the near horizon so i believe that we will be spending most of our time if not all of our, our time continuing to advocate continuing to 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 um to advocate on behalf of the people, the poor and the vulnerable people across the world and, 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 and making sure that the needs um, in these countries are being seen and heard and that we have the resources needed to, to assist in the ways that we need to assist. So unfortunately, I, I foresee that this will, um, last a long time into the future and that this is where we're going to spend all our efforts in Copenhagen uh, where we cover the Nordic countries um, because they're important partners all of them Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland are extremely important partners to the World Food Programme strategically also funding wise. Um, we will also of course continue to advocate and, 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 and make sure that people uh, hear about the results that we achieve together with Finland, for instance, because we achieve major, um, major results thanks to the funding and the partnership we have with countries like Finland. Anne Paulsen, thank you so much for the interview and good luck and stay safe. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Maailma kylässä radio. Pysy kuulolla. 